Dr. Louis Arroyo is a researcher at the Ontario Veterinary College, and today he's going to introduce a new research project which may make fecal transplantation a viable option in the future to treat equines with gastrointestinal issues. Welcome, Dr. Arroyo, and thank you for joining us. Hello, Jackie. Thank you for having me. So first of all, how have advances in genome sequencing uh, impacted what we know about how the gut functions? Yes, that's an interesting question. Um, so you um, uh, sequencing uh, technology available to us, what we learn is um, about the different microenvironment, if you like, what kind of bacteria lives in the different compartments of the gastrointestinal tract for horse. And then we know uh, the first task was to determine what is normal, what uh, what you expect in certain compartments, what families of bacteria, if you like, what proportion of that bacteria should be in there. And then once we have uh, sort of an idea what the core microflora, if you like, or microbiome that exists in these different environments, and then we can determine, you know, in disease processes uh, or processes, what is wrong, which one has been more affected, how it's been impacted, and how can this potentially impact the health of the animal. And we still have lots to learn, but at least we know that during uh, disease processes, that these different microenvironments are very different compared to a normal healthy gut. Can you explain uh, dysbiosis for us and what's going on in a diseased gut? Yes, of course. So, for example, uh, there are certain bacteria that we call um, the good bacteria or the gut or the bad bacteria. Some of these bacteria actually is is hard to categorize it in into bad or good because what is important here is the proportion and how they interact. Uh, between them. So uh, we expect, for example, just as an example, uh, to have a lot of anaerobic bacteria in the gut because this is an anaerobic microenvironment. So you see a lot of Clostridia that they are actually very good. They are actually uh, breaking down uh, uh, ingested food or product. We have bacteria that the function is to break down some of these complex carbohydrates that are ingested by the animal and actually turn out to produce um, energy and um, nutritious uh, factors for the animal, in this case, the horse. And in this biosis, what happened is that the normal um, microbiome or the normal uh, bacteria or the normal inhabitants of these environments are abnormal. They are shifted and they change the proportions one the other. And then that allows for overgrowth of some bacteria that, for example, start to break down, as an example, carbohydrates. You know, if you give an animal like too, much, too much carbohydrates, a horse, what happens is a certain type of bacteria will overgrow, produce a lot of lactic acid, for example, and that gets up so systemically and the animal goes in acidosis and that can even induce something like laminitis. So this biosis changes in the normal um, in having this of the gut, and that allows uh, for certain bacteria to overgrow and potentially cause disease. What makes transplantation of fecal microbiota a potentially desirable option to treat these diseases like colic or colitis in horses? Yeah, this is uh, this is really the greatest question, and and, and I think that uh, there have been um, attempts to to work on this for decades, and perhaps that's the principle for the, the uses of probiotics on prebiotics and, and these type of practices. And really what we want to do is to replace that normal uh, microbial population that is in this intestine that is very important to maintain or to uh, keep the homeostasis of the gut of the digestion and absorption of nutrients because we know that in, in this, during disease processes, or for example, the best known, um, you know, uh, if you like, um, induce this biosis is the use of antibiotics. So antibiotics 
uh, will go and kill certain type of bacteria in the gut, and that allows other bacteria to overgrow. Um, and that can take uh, four to six weeks to come back to normal. So what we want to do is, is speed up the process of uh, reestablishing or, or reintroducing the normal microflora into the gut of these affected animals. The biggest problem that we have at the moment is that we don't have a standardized, consistent method or technique to do that. And uh, during the process of taking the samples and processing it to transphonate the animal, we may lose a lot of very important and viral bacteria, uh, you know, during, for example, uh, the dilution or the mixing of this um, uh, microflora and the inoculum that we want to produce to transfer to the other horse. So we want to com come up with a, with a method that we is more, cons more consistent or more reproducible and that the bacteria, the important bacteria that we want to transfer to the affected animals is still viable, is still, you know, um, alive and uh, able to do its job. Now, they've had a lot of success with dogs and humans in uh, fecal transplantation, but uh, I understand there's some challenges for performing uh, the same procedure in a horse. Can you tell us a bit about that? So it has been very successful in humans because um, they are able, for example, to put the transformation directly in the colon, for example, through a colonoscopy, or uh, when they do through... Um, Per mouth uh, inoculation, they also uh, they can do some maneuvers. For example, give some um, antiacids or uh, neutralizes the pH. So, and the passage from the stomach into the site of action, which is the colon, is kind of short. So they actually they are able to truly transformate and um, and reach important concentrations of the bacteria or the organisms they want to transfer in, in humans easily. In horses, the problem is that they um, uh, they have a very long uh, gastrointestinal tract, so the small intestine is very long, meters and meters, as you know. So um, by the time this um, transformative juice uh, gets into the column, uh, the number of bacteria that might reach there is not the desirable one. Uh, and then the small column is also very long. So actually, do it through endoscopy via rectum is not successful because we basically don't reach too far into the sites of, the, of where we want the action to occur, which is the large colon or the cecum. So we uh, are working on um, a way to better deliver uh, a meaningful transformation of the, these important bacteria or this important microflora that we want to transfer into a disease horse. And how will your study seek to overcome these challenges? Yes, um, basically what we are uh, going to do is um, we will collect these uh, transformation products and we will, um, in vitro, we will look at um, all the different things that we do when we're doing the transformations and see how that negative impact the bacteria that lives in there. And based on that, we can better work, for example, on um, uh, products that I will preserve the bacteria. We can add additives to that, that the bacteria uh, is less likely to die. Or if we can also, for example, add a cryopreservant that we can freeze that tr uh, transformation product and then throw it down the road when we have an animal that is sick and then transformate it um, when needed. So we, we want to work on a, on a standard um, inoculum that we can easily is repeatable and we can have a hand and that we know that the, the what is in it um, is still viable and is still going to be you know meaningful to uh, to the animal that needs it. Well thank you Dr. Arroyo. I look forward to following the progress of this study. Uh, is there anything you would like to sum up or mention in closing? I think this is a, it's an exciting project. Uh, we are uh, hoping to uh, be able to come up with um, a more standardized and consistent method to uh, to um, transplant these sick animals. And hopefully down the road, we can also develop studies where 
where we test whether or not the these products that we are preparing are truly making a clinical difference.